You were the president when Russian forces moved into Crimea, when Russian separatists took over large parts of the Donbass. What do you think now? How far does President Putin want to go? President Putin wants to go as far as we allow him to go. With that situation, I have a huge experience because I was elected as a president when Ukraine don't have an armed forces. Crimea was occupied and all Donbass was occupied. And I'm proud that me and my team, together with Ukrainian people, create the new armed forces under the NATO standard. And we released from the Russian troops two thirds of the occupied Donbass, including Mariupol, including Slavyansk, Kramatorsk, Konstantinovka, Severodonetsk, Lysychansk. All these things were under Ukrainian control within the first four months of the war because of the heroism of Ukrainian soldiers. And what's happening now? The Putin, Putin start to be completely different, completely crazy. And with that situation, definitely he count that within a days, maybe two or three days, he captured all Ukraine and changed the government, changed the parliament, changed the country. Or maybe to try to do with Ukraine exactly the same like he do with the Crimea, or now he attempt to do with the Kherson to push pressure to that Ukraine start to be the part of the Soviet Union second edition or the Russian Empire. This is the uh, absolutely crazy idea who said, think that the uh, collapse of the Soviet Union was the uh, global catastrophe. And with this situation, I'm absolutely uh, agreed with you that uh, now on the 77th day, Ukrainian troops start to uh, counterattack. This is happening not only in Kharkiv, where we have released nine villages. This is happening also in Kherson region, where I returned back only a couple of days ago, where our battalion is fighting on the border between Nikolaev and Kherson. That starts to be possible because of you. Because you give but us this, yep. the weapons. But this has helped us to do that. Ukraine is putting up a stiff resistance, but it is losing ground. It's on the brink of losing Mariupol. It's losing in the east of Ukraine. What is your assessment of Ukraine's commander in chief, Vladimir Zelensky, the president? He almost put you in prison in January. Now you're one of his supporters? First of all, Ukraine commander in chief is a general Zaluzhny. I told you that because I was a supreme commander in chief. And with that situation, we have a separation. Uh, the responsibility of the president and responsibility of the armed forces. And again, I'm proud that we, uh, my team, created these armed forces for the last seven, eight years. And for the president Zelensky, this is the most important thing that we demonstrate the Ukrainian unity for an effective weapons against Putin, because Putin expects to undermine from inside the uh, stability and unity in Ukraine, and we ruin this Putin expectation, because on the 24th of February, when the war launched, we are shoulder to shoulder, all Ukrainians, and we uh, united not around certain position, we around, uh, around, united around Ukraine, and all of us as soldiers, President Zelensky, leader of the opposition, Poroshenko, members of parliament, members of government, volunteers, and Ukrainian people. And that surprised the world together with the Ukrainian armed forces surprised the world on their 12th already weeks of fighting against Russia. Do you think Europe is doing enough to support Ukraine? During your presidency, you took the first steps towards greater integration with Europe. But here we are in 2022, and President Macron is saying it could still take decades. Are they doing enough? First of all, we are very much appreciated to European Union, to the United States for their global leadership, and for the Great Britain and your great prime minister, Boris Johnson. This is the real demonstration, the unity of the Western world and solidarity with Ukraine, we definitely Putin do not accept. 
ex expect. And uh, what we uh, think, day by day, they do more. Two months ago, I called to the Western leaders, please, we need to make five steps of support of Ukraine. Point number one, this is the land lease. I very much appreciate the uh, decision of the United States Congress, and we expect it the decision of the British Parliament. You know exactly what does it mean, land lease, and we need a British land lease and European land lease. We uh, have point number two, this is the Marshall Plan. And Marshall Plan is the donor conference when we should be enough. Now we have $40 billion, which vote just yesterday from the United States, and 1.3 billion pounds, which happening and, uh, in the UK. We need more land lease from nutrition to ammunition. Point number three, we need weapons. We need everything and uh, we need an offensive weapons. And what is it offensive weapons? Offensive weapons is a game changer. Can you imagine that if uh, the future of the world is depending from 1,000 uh, armed personal carrier, 500 tanks, 100 jet fighter and 300 anti-aircraft missiles. Point number four, we need sanction and embargo. And again, UK and US is already a leader, but we definitely need the six pass package of sanction, which should be adopted by European Union. And some of the European nation said that they are reluctant to do that. Please, this is the symbol of the Putin political corruption. We should keep unity. And point number five, and point number four, this is the membership action plan to NATO. And this is the official status as a candidate nation for the European Union.